Hello everyone. Good evening. Good evening all. Good evening and welcome to day four of our generative AI master class. I hope. Good evening. Good evening, guys. Very good evening. Very good evening. Am I audible? Can you see my screen? Yes. So, yeah. Thanks for the confirmation and uh, discussing about our previous session. I hope we have skipped or we have left some part to complete from day three. So we'll be doing that in this session, and then we'll move into the next day. Okay, which means in day four's content, we'll be dealing with that after seeing some basics. Which we have to cover in the previous session. Okay. Good evening. Good evening, all. Good evening, dear participants. Very good evening. So, what we have discussed in day three? Can you guys just post down some glimpse of what we have seen in day three, particularly? Just a recap. Yes. So, what all the topics we have completed? In day three, so in day three we have discussed about basics of deep learning and uh, what is neural network. Okay, what yes. So some of the topics we have covered are how our input is gets multiplied with weight and then added with bias and then an activation function is applied and then this happens in every neuron from input to output. And that completes one forward propagation, right? So after doing this, we'll be going into backward propagation. I hope you guys remember, with the help of optimizers and loss function, we'll be dealing with back propagation, where the task is to improve, right? Yes, we have also discussed the basics of linear and logistic regression. Very good. So in this particular session. I hope we haven't seen about different types of activation function and different loss functions available and different optimizers. So we'll see some glimpse of it and then move into day four, which is going to be a hands-on session on building basic neural network with PyTorch. Okay. So discussing about that, we are going to discuss about activation function, loss function, and optimizers, and how to and when to choose which one. Okay. Good evening, all. I think there is a delay. Can I just confirm from my team that is everything fine? Can I continue with the session? Our dear participants, just post down that the thumbs up emoji so that I could start the session. So talking about the activation function, okay? So we have different types. For example, we have sigmoid activation function. We have tanh. We have relu. We have leaky relu, we have softmax, and we have linear. Okay, so these are some of the common. So if you ask me whether this is the possible thing, no. Okay, so there are a lot and lot of activation functions. These are some of the commonly used activation function. Okay, so what we are going to see here, so let us start with sigmoid activation function. Sigmoid activation uses this particular formula, and do you guys remember? Do you guys remember this particular formula and this graph? This sigmoid curve, we have already seen it somewhere. Can you guys tell me where it is? So the sigmoid activation function is particularly used. If you guys remember, okay. So we have seen it in logistic regression. This is a formula applied in logistic regression, and your output is going to be converted between zero to one. Okay. So if you remember in logistic regression, we have used a threshold value. To determine the output as either belongs to zero or one, okay. But here, okay. So here, you can also use sigmoid activation function which applies this formula. So if you guys remember in deep learning, okay, in deep learning, once the weight and bias that process completed, once the summation is done, okay. So an activation function, a formula is applied, right? In that particular place, you could place sigmoid activation function. So if you place that, your output is going to be between zero to one in that particular range. Okay. 
so that's what sigmoid activation function is and there is some things which you have to know which means that you have to use it only in some certain places and that's the reason behind it so the problem with sigmoid activation function is it has a problem which is called as vanishing gradient problem okay vanishing means disappearing and gradients is nothing but our uh, derivative which is used for optimization okay once you take the derivation okay to update your weight and bias what they are trying to tell is when you go with sigmoid activation function your output is now changed between a value which is 0 to 1 okay so once you have a value between 0 to 1 when you take a derivative of it what they are tell is what they tell is based on the study they are telling that the derivative is going to give you a value which is between 0 to 0 0.25 only okay which is a very small value so in this small value what happens is when you try to update your weight and bias okay so there is like they are facing some difficulties it is not updating and the gradients are vanishing okay so that's why what they tell is okay so in certain places only you have to go with sigmoid activation function and you guys should know that for each layer okay you could choose different activation functions we have multiple hidden layers input layer and output layer right so you can select each like you could select whatever activation function you want in each layer and what they suggest is if you are facing okay if you want to solve a binary classification problem like we did in logistic regression then in your output layer just go with sigmoid activation function only in the output layer of your binary classification if your is not a binary classification if it is someone something else like regression or multi class classification just don't go with sigmoid activation function so the next activation function we are going to see is called as tan h function okay so this tan h what it does is it applies this particular formula and your output is going to be not between 0 to 1 like we had in sigmoid okay so here the output is going to be between minus 1 to plus 1 so it comes in a range of minus 1 to plus 1 okay so when you take a derivative of this it is going to be between 0 to 1 okay so it's not that 0.25 so this sigmoid vanishing gradient problem okay has been dealt okay in tan h so tan h is an option which you could choose for your hidden layers if you want or your input layer we mostly won't go with output layer tan h and then one important activation function which is called as relu okay so this relu activation function is one of the most commonly used activation function in input layer and hidden layers so what this relu will do is for example as we know that your input multiplied with weight added with bias summation is done and then activation function applied right so let that summation be x so it is going to apply this particular formula which is a very simple formula max between 0 and your x okay which means that if who is the maximum one that will be taken as the output this is the simple formula okay so but what happens is if your x is a positive value then who is the bigger one either 0 or that positive value can you guys tell me who is the largest value 0 or that x if your x is positive then your positive value will be the biggest one so that's the maximum value so that will be the output it will be taken as such see here those are taken as such but if your value is negative then max between 0 and negative value is 0 which means that when you apply relu function if that output generated is going to be negative then it is converted into 0 okay whenever it is negative it is taken as 0 and only positive values are taken as such this is relu function and sometimes if you find that okay if you find relu is not performing well in some case if your data may have lot of negative features in that particular output and your data is not performing well and it is losing lot of information see here when you go with relu all your negative informations are actually removed right so what happens is if you want to take care of that also for example if you have negative values you want to give some least importance to it you could go with this leaky relu okay so leaky relu has something known as okay so it is going to take a maximum instead of 0 it is going to take between 0.1 multiplied by x comma x okay so if your x is going to be a positive value then it is taken as such if x is a negative value okay then you could compare okay you are taking one tenth of it and we know in negative values 
okay so if you just compare and apply this formula the maximum value will be this particular output in negative so only least importance is given to negative values so that's what your leaky relu okay it's leaking some part so that is leaky relu then here comes the soft max activation function remember we have seen probability it is going to apply this entire formula and your output okay will be the based on probabilities so if you sum it your entire output is 1 can you guys tell me here who is the most probable or who is having the maximum value and what's the arg max of it and soft max activation function is particularly used only in the output layer of multi class classification and you know why why guys we have for example this represents five different classes for example like apple orange banana some two different fruits so totally you have five different fruits you are predicting the probability here who is the most probable one 0.90 right okay so the and the arc max is going to be 1 so the first class this is 0 this is 1 1 is the max yes correct 0.90 very good guys so that is taken and that's how soft max is used in activation functions in the output layer of multi class classification and then finally we have something known as a linear activation function okay so this linear activation is also called as no activation function because okay this is just going to give you whatever input you give it is just going to give it as output it doesn't apply any particular formula okay so it will be simply giving out the output and this is particularly used in regression based outputs okay so how to select activation function so in case of binary classification particularly go with sigmoid function in the output and rest it's optional so you could choose any of like relu or leaky relu uh, sorry relu or leaky relu or tangent and so on so in case of multi class classification you could go with the same input and hidden layers but in output go with soft max okay so in case of regression just go with linear activation function in output and remaining you can go with any activation functions if it's clear i could talk about loss function and then optimizers and then we can jump into hands on of building a basic neural network with pytorch is it clear guys about activation function now you guys understand that the formula which is applied after multiplying with weight plus bias summation is taken whatever formula you apply is going to be applied so it is up to you you have to select okay you will be tuning it and then talking about loss function if you guys remember in neural network once the forward prop propagation is done once the output is generated it is going to compare with the original output right so you have different options here like mean squared error mean absolute error binary cross entropy multi class cross entropy or categorical cross entropy so this mean absolute error and mean squared error are going to apply in regression based problems okay so in regression if you guys remember it is going to compare like we have seen in linear regression the error is calculated based on y minus y cap and this is square error which means the error is taken square of it okay and then for example if you take for 100 hundred samples then divide by 100 taking average mean taking mean for it and then for mean absolute error here instead of squaring it the same y minus the predicted one and then absolute value is taken and for example the sample sum is done so this is applied in regression problems remember mean squared error and mean absolute errors okay and then we have binary cross entropy for binary classification problem we'll go with binary cross entropy or also called as ble loss in pytorch i'll show you when we go out hands on with projects this formula is applied to compare how many outputs or what's the accuracy for multi class classification problem we will go with this formula in the name of categorical cross entropy or cross entropy loss which is available in pytorch and then moving into optimizers if you guys remember okay we have already discussed what is gradient descent how it is moving okay and we have another famous optimizer which is commonly used which is called as adam and not only this different optimizers are available so you could use and uh, in particular your case in your data 
any of the optimizers can work well okay most commonly adam will work well so that's up to you and this gradient descent if you guys remember it is going to calculate the new weight based on the old weight and learning rate and learning rate is going to be a constant value in gradient descent it is available in the name of simple gradient descent in pytorch okay and it is going to take a incremental step and this is a constant value in gradient descent but when you go with adam optimizer the advantage here is it is going to have a learning rate which is dynamic okay so every time it is going to get changed based on the requirement so it is going to for example if it requires it going to take a learning rate which is high and improves very fast and if it requires to slow down okay so it is going to take very small steps clear that is adam optimizer we will be using adam optimizer from pytorch for a lot of time and yeah guys so that's it about that part so we are going to now go into hands on okay so that's enough of basics for deep learning so let us just go and jump into and build a neural network with pytorch so before starting so if you want to convert this master class into one month certified internship on generative ai you could join as an internship user so the benefits will be 30 days of live sessions 90 days of access to it source codes of product projects downloadable pptes zoom sessions six zoom session will be conducted so you could every weekend you will be directly interacting with me so to clarify all your doubts okay so this source code projects the project files okay collab files data set downloadable okay model files and all will be given to you if you join as internship user so when you join you will be getting internship confirmation letter and then internship certification by the end and you will be certified in generative ai on one month internship so you could join as an internship user by registering in the registration link given in chat box and the fee for it is going to be a discounted fee of 899 and it is available for a few period so after that if you wish to join you have to pay a regular fee of 1700 so this we will be giving for very short time so if you are interested to join and if you are planning just to do it as soon as possible so these are all the projects so we are actually in day 4 we are going to create a basic neural network with pytorch and then tomorrow we have a deep learning project on breast cancer prediction with neural network and then flight fire prediction using neural network and then we'll be seeing computer vision basics and then a computer vision project using cnn in pytorch plant disease detection with images and then the next half of your internship will be jumping into generative adversarial networks for realistic face generation artwork generation image to image translation high quality face generation and then variational auto encoders and lot of interesting things so if you want to join the link is given in the chat box you could use the registration link and register for it and join and get these benefits so jumping into our and also i want to add one more thing we have a bundle okay so if you are beginner and you want to have from basics like from python programming like starting from the very base all the basics of basics of computer vision and then basics of artificial intelligence okay so the entire artificial intelligence including deep learning machine learning with python and then our generative ai so you could get it as a bundle and uh, if you want to avail this bundle the link will be posted in chat box so if you are interested you could also go for it So if you are familiar with these basics you want just generative ai you could look into this internship or you could choose the bundle if you want from the base yeah so now we are going to jump into hands on okay so we'll be jumping into the hands on and we need to learn one thing there is a module which is available in the name of torch.nn okay so nn is stands for neural network so we have it in pytorch If you guys remember, we can import Torch, right? So from Torch, you could import this NN. So this NN, what is the use of it? Is it is a module in Pytorch deep learning library that provides support for building and training neural network. Till now, we have seen some basics of Pytorch about handling tensors and all. Fine. So how are we going to create a neural network then? 
Okay, so for the creation of neural networks, we need to use this module, which is dot nn, and this nn in PyTorch module offers pre-built components like layers for you, the loss function, the optimizers for construction and training of neural networks can be done with torch dot nn. Okay, so from torch we could import nn. Can we do it, guys? Can we go hands on? The combo link will be posted in chat box guys so if you want to get the offer of a combo okay so you could also get this bundle offer so from the base till generative it is from the start till end okay so you could get all the contents in that bundle so from torch import nn okay so nn stands for neural network here it is going to have all the pre-built things which we want to use when we have to create a neural network so this is going to be the very base thing okay yeah and then we have something known as nn dot module okay so before going into this module okay i'm going to create a sample data set on my own okay we are what we are going to do in this session is using pytorch okay using neural network we are going to build a model which is nothing but our linear regression model okay what is the linear regression model if you guys remember we have learnt linear regression right so for that let me load a sample data okay i'll import torch and import matplotlib.pyplot as plt so this matplotlib is for uh, creating images okay it is for generating graphs and all and don't worry guys just follow me by the end i'll be teaching you how to build a neural network okay so before that we'll choose a sample data set okay so i'm going to create a sample data set with a range okay in a range we could start with the number i should end at one and i want to take an incremental step of 0 0.2 0 0.02 okay so this is my data set i'm going to create and use so let me just uh, take this okay in these values so the data set will look different really when we go and hands on in next session on project i'll show you how to convert it so the data will be looking like this when you unsqueeze it okay you guys know what is unsqueeze adding extra dimension if i go with dimension one i'll be getting this okay so this is my data now it's like a column right so i'm i have with multiple rows i have a single column this is my data okay so i'm just going to store it in a variable which is called as x can we do it guys okay so i'm going to store it in x so this is going to be my feature which is a single independent feature i have here now and then what i'm going to do is in y okay i'm going to apply a formula if you guys remember what's the formula of our uh, like let me apply this okay like we used to do i am going to multiply our input with weight okay so weightage i will give a weightage of 0 0.7 and then i am going to add with a bias let me give a bias of 0 0.3 i am doing it manually and then i'll show you i am just creating a data of x and y so this is my y going to be okay multiplied with weight plus a bias gets added so i have my y which is output okay and i have a x which is my data okay so this is a sample data I have created manually and uh, please listen. So here from now on, what we are going to do is we are going to make a split here. Okay. So in machine learning and deep learning, what I, what we used to do is, for example, if we have, okay, let me just write it in text. Okay. We are going to split it into training and testing part. Okay. Usually when you have a data, for example, if I have hundred rows of data, Okay, so if I have 100 rows of data, so what generally people does is they will be randomly picking 80 rows for training, okay, and 20 rows for testing. Okay, if you know machine learning, you would have known it already. Why they are doing this is in this 80 rows, they will be taking the features as well as the label and give their neural network or model to learn. So the model will learn now. So it's like teaching in school you are going to give the questions and answers so once it is learned when you want to check or evaluate it what we will be doing is we will be going to give this 20 rows of questions alone which is going to be the features 
and we will ask it to predict y okay so we will ask it to give your answers so model will now write answers and you have the original 20 answers so we will be comparing with the original one and the predicted one and you will be giving the results so that's what that error calculation happening okay so here i have a data so if i just go with uh, length of x okay and then length of y yeah like sampling very good very good so it is randomly picked when you go with the data set here i have a data which is have a size of 50 here uh, let me just go with 20 percent for testing and 80 percent for training okay so the length is 50 so what i could do is i could just create a split and machine learning we have a library which is called as scikit learn where we could if you simply pass they will be randomly picking some samples based on the size you mentioned but here let us do manually i'll just take an integer of 80 percent which is 0.8 multiplied by the length of x okay so this is going to give me a split let us see what's the split is i hope it's 40 right so the 40 rows is for training and remaining 10 is going to be for testing so let me create variables like x train x test sorry x train and y train okay these are training which means the training x and y is going to be from x let me use slicing to split it till 40 okay in x till 40 and then in y till 40 which is split and then in x test and y test let me just go with start from 40 until end which is the last 10 and then from 40 till the end okay so let us go and see the length of x train okay and then the length of x test can you guys see this so we have training questions in x train and training answer in y train and in testing questions in x test and testing answers in y test understood the length of y train is going to be 40 questions here we need to have 40 answers here right so the 40 40 and 10 and 10 questions and answers are ready and the above two is for learning and this is for testing purpose okay so is it clear till now can we continue with the next one so before building our neural network i'll do one more thing i'll call plt which is matplotlib to plot a scatter plot okay so if you are interested just learn this library it is useful for visualizing okay so we can have x train and y train here and i'll set a color of blue and a size of 5 and the label let me give it as training data okay this is the x train and y train x axis is going to be x train y axis is going to be y train and then plt dot scatter x test and y test okay and the color i'll give it as let us go with green and the size is going to be 5 and then the label is going to be testing data okay let me go with plt.legend to show the legend and plt.show okay so this is my training and testing data can you guys see it so the first 40 entries is in training and the remaining 10 are going to be in testing okay later on when i predict and show the output i'll, I'll show where it is lies and how we are going to make that prediction so now it's time for us to build our neural network so what i'm going to do is i need to create a model so in other libraries it is very easy okay so in if you know we have a deep learning library called as tensorflow okay so you could just directly import it and then easily do it but as i told you even though it's easy who is the most powerful is pytorch okay all the real-time applications are based on pytorch so here it gives the functionality and options to modify and fine tune so that's why it is very small difficult okay so here we'll be using okay how you need to build your neural network is to write a function sorry write a code based on python class okay so that class should inherit or if you guys remember know in python class and object in whoops concept you could have a parent and a child class 
okay you could inherit methods and functions from one class to another okay so if you are going to build a neural network you could create a class in python okay and that should inherit from this module which is called as nn dot module so why is yes, all the functions inside can be used inside of your class which you are creating so torch dot nn dot module enables the creation of custom neural network architectures by serving as a foundation for defining and organizing model components within pytorch so it acts like a container for trainable parameters like weight bias and other layers allowing for easy management and access during training okay so this inheriting ensures compatibility with pytorch autograd system so the gradients are calculated automatically if you inherit this okay for bracket propagation and subclassing this promotes code reusability makes it straight forward to create save and load complex neural network models so this is how you have to create you need to create your own class but it should inherit here torch dot nn dot module so if you have imported nn then nn dot module capital m okay and then we need to go with some functions so let me just start and explain one by one so let us start with class linear regression i need to in inherit nn dot module okay so all the functions and methods inside of module can be accessible from class so if you guys know python class and object the first thing we used to do is we'll go with double underscore init double underscore and pass self here so this is going to instantiate your objects okay so here what you have to do is you have to go with the command which is called a super from python super dot double underscore init double underscore okay and do you guys know what's the reason for why we are actually using super is so if you use super it is going to instantiate everything from your parent class and can you guys tell me who is the parent class here can you guys tell me who is the parent class here guys if you are not familiar with python basic concepts like oops concept and all i'll tell you take your time and then refresh it once again okay you can use matplotlib you can use c1 you can use plotly we are just going to see the output okay see the graph you could use whatever library you want so the super is going to instantiate okay the parent class and who is the parent here is your parent class is going to be your nn dot module okay the parameters inside should be instantiated so that is done with the super okay and then what i am going to do is i am going to go and store okay self in that i am going to manually create a parameter which is called as weight okay so for sample i am building a basic neural network but in pytorch instead of we manually deciding the weight and bias it can be done in another method which i'll tell later so for now i am going to create a weight so for weight let me go with something known as so if you are storing any parameter what you have to do is you have to do it inside of this nn dot parameter in neural network parameter so this parameter if you pass any values inside it is used to explicitly specify which tensor should be treated as models learnable parameter like this weight and bias are learnable parameters right which should be changed when you assign a tensor as an attribute of pytorch module and wrap it in this parameter it informs pytorch that this tensor should be treated as a learnable parameter during optimization okay so during optimization if you wanted to tune we know that right we will be tuning it later on in back propagation so in such times if you wanted to change you have to give it inside parameter okay so let me just go and call this parameter so this torch we have already have it right nn dot capital p parameter okay so inside parameter i am going to create nothing but okay we know that our weight and bias are just random numbers right so let me just go and call torch dot rand okay and let me pass how many value i want i just want one value and for safety we are going to mention what's the data type we want we want it as float okay torch dot float comma in this parameter i am going to tell that it requires gradient okay this helps for calculation and all okay so requires grade will be true okay so this is how you will be storing parameter clear requires grade will be true 
and then let me just go and create self weight is fine now we need bias right so let me go with self dot bias equal to nm dot parameter okay and go with torch dot rand here also it's a random parameter one value data type equal to torch dot float see here what all things we have learned in the basics or we are using it now and we will be using it in later on also so require grad is going to be true okay so now weight and bias are created and i am planning to create a linear regression so finally by integrating a formula you have to always go if you want to apply some function you have to use something known as forward okay so in the name forward if you use it it is going to give this module a signal that what is forward let us see so the forward method okay in a torch dot nn dot module subclass specifies the computation that takes place during the forward pass establishing the architectures input to output mapping is done with the help of your forward so whatever you apply in forward will be given as the output particular model okay so in forward let me pass self comma i am going to get a value which is x okay and then x is going to be a torch dot tensor i'm just mentioning to get a tensor okay and just return what's the formula guys x multiplied by self dot weight plus self dot bias we are just applying what we have learned we are not applying any other activation function we are just doing this clear guys is it clear about linear regression which we have created now so forward is a method which should be given and that will link to nn dot module which is going to just connect and apply this formula thing am i audible is my internet connection stable why some guys are discussing that in a tissue and all is it for me or you guys i hope everything is clear is it clear till now so that's it about creation of your basic neural network and there are a lot of more steps to follow to make it run and i'll be hands on showing you how this neural network learns clear okay fine so next what we are going to do is for reproducibility i am going to go with torch dot manual seed okay manual seed is going to be i'll set it to 42 okay yeah it is should be set it as 42 here so once the manual seed is applied let me create a object which is lr in python class i need to create a object for that class right so linear regression okay so we are creating a class now everything looks fine okay so in this class if you want to know what all their parameters you could call lr dot parameter okay so this is going to give you something like which you can't understand one minute no attribute parameter it's parameters sorry guys okay so it will be giving like a generator so if you want to see something inside of it you could just turn it into a list and that is going to show you what's inside which is nothing but okay we have a weight which is 0.88 is given and a bias which is 0.91 is given clear so this is randomly generated and if you guys remember for my particular output i have manually given a weightage of 0.7 and a bias of 0.3 will give you proper result but this is going to be a randomly generated one which later on will be improved by the learning of neural network that we are going to see hands on okay so you could also use something known as lr dot state dict okay so this is going to give you what all the parameters it, it will give you a order dict of what is the weight and what is the bias okay yes you could change the name and coefficient of weight and bias here practically when we go we'll go with some other thing which is easily done without manually going and setting weight and bias for example i'm showing to show you guys how it is actually done okay is it clear guys and one more thing guys so if you want your neural network see here 
it has a random weight and bias now so let us see let us make a prediction a false prediction and check so if you want to make prediction you want to go with with torch dot inference mode okay so this inference mode will tell your neural network that hey you are not now training you are just attending a test so just give answers you are not going to learn okay so the y prediction let me call my linear regression class and let me pass my x test values this is randomly given numbers okay the weight has no attribute called as weight okay see see here i have missed s yes here so that's a problem it's weights i have given spelling mistake so let me just select it once again so this is a random parameters which is generated since i am using the manual seed 42 it is going to give me same numbers every time i run so they are randomly generated and i am going to ask it to give a answer based on this weight and bias so it has given okay so if you check the length of y pred okay this is the predicted answer which is going to be 10 and the length of original answer is going to be y test which is going to be 10 okay so now if you want to compare okay so i let me just go with the scatter plot which i have used okay so let me just go with plt dot scatter okay i think i already have it right we have already done let me just copy it and in this let me just fine tune one more thing plt dot scatter okay your x test and instead of y test let us pass y predicted one with a color of red and a size of 5 and the label which is called as predicted okay so with random details or random weight and bias your prediction will look something like this can you guys see this is the original one with the weight of 0.7 and the bias which i have given which the model doesn't know initially the random values is giving an output here now the neural network want to learn when you train it it will learn that the real data stays here so it is trying to reduce it and it should match this can you guys understand what is the task we are having with for our neural network is it clear guys can we continue with the next step so before going and creating a training loop for forward and backward propagation now we have created only a model okay so if you wanted to train you need to go through some steps this steps which we will follow for all these entire sessions the same steps will be given okay so you have to learn it carefully so let me just go and first before continuing with that i need to create a loss function and an optimizer okay we need to create it early itself so what is this loss function so in torch dot nn you can have variety of loss functions and you could get for your particular task and in optimizers you have to go with torch dot optim and in that you could select your optimizers okay so before continuing this hands on so if you want to convert this master class into one month certified internship on generative ai you could join as an internship user you will be getting 30 days of sessions 90 days of access to it source code of project downloadable pptes zoom sessions every week you can directly interact in zoom session with me to clarify all your doubts internship confirmation letter and internship certification at the end so if you want to join as an internship user the link is provided in the chat box so you could use the registration link and get it in a discounted fee of 899 and it is available for a short period of time so if you want register as soon as possible so later on if you want you have to pay a fee of 7700 these are all the contents and you if you want from the basic a bundle is also available from our side from basic python programming all the complex basics of artificial intelligence including machine learning deep learning and then our generative ai also you could get it as a bundle so the bundle link is also given in chat box so you could choose based on your requirement so continuing with this let us go and create our loss function and optimizers okay so i'll use a sample loss here so loss is going to torch dot nn dot let me call something known as l1 loss okay so this l1 loss is nothing but okay okay it doesn't have maybe this capital 
okay if you check the documentation of what is l1 loss it is going to be mean absolute error okay mean absolute error is going to be in the name of l1 loss and then let me create an optimizer in the name optim okay so torch dot optim dot you have something known as adam or you can go with sgd which is simple gradient descent okay so let me pick adam which is one of the famous one so here you can't directly go and create it you need to pass some details okay parameters you should pass so what is this params is so the params should be nothing but your lr your models parameters so it if you guys remember it's whose task okay who is the task to modify your weights and bias it is going to be optimizer and he want to know which thing he need to optimize so you need to pass your parameters okay which is weight and bias i am passing and you could also choose your learning rate if you want initially it is uh, by default it is 0 0.01 you could tune like 0 0.1 or whatever you want okay let me just go with a learning rate of 0 0.01 okay so that is our optimizer so if you are ready with this okay now we are going to build our training mode inference mode and all so torch dot manual seed for reproducibility i'll set a seed of 42 okay uh, let us run in 42 itself and then the number of epoch i'm going to have is 100 so do you guys know what are the epochs i haven't told you right so all your data for example if you have thousand rows okay if your thousand rows goes one forward propagation and completes one backward propagation that one step of forward and backward propagation of all your entire data is called as one epoch okay so which means every time every epoch it is going to have new parameters and it is going to update itself right so if you have 10 epochs it is going to run 10 times forward and backward and every time it is going to update its parameter okay so that's what epoch is and for checking some details let me just store some list for example epoch count a list and then training loss is going to be a list and test loss is going to be a list i'll be storing this so that later on i can show you a graph so now we want to run a loop for epoch in range in using range let me call epochs so this loop is going to run how many epochs 10 so 10 times it will run okay so here what i am going to do is i am going to start the training mode so for training okay okay this inference mode we have seen and then let us go with the training part so for training for epoch if you run it in loop first start your model and call something known as train clear so that's up to your uh, data so for example some data may be learned perfectly in just 10 epochs sometimes if it requires you can go with 100 epochs you don't have a particular number for it okay so we are going to go with train so let me just call our lr dot train okay after that what we need to do is we need to make prediction so this will integrate the training mode okay so now your method is set to model training mode so during training you typically use the model to forward pass batches of data compute the loss and perform back propagation and update the model parameters so for this process to continue go with model dot train so i have started the train so after that what you have to do is you have to make predictions okay so initially with random parameter let me just make prediction y pred equal to let me just go with loss 
sorry we need to make predictions right lr and let me just pass my x train values the questions of training okay and then the loss function is going to be i need to calculate the loss so it will be making a random prediction based on random weight and bias let me just call my loss function which we have already set it so let me just pass the original the predicted one as well as the original one for this training questions the training answers 40 answers are here so the loss function for training is calculated now so once this is calculated you are going to use something known as okay so you need to call your optimizers okay after this you will be going and calling your optimizer to set the gradients to zero so every time you run the gradients will change but when you start in the forward propagation your gradient should be set to zero so let me call this optim my optimizer to set a gradient of zero okay so once the zero gradient is done now it's ready to learn and the process is completed after that i need to call this loss function which i have calculated here and go and ask it to move backward which is backward propagation just calculate the backward details so this will calculate okay so once that is done you want your optimizer to update the weight and bias to do that you have to call your optimizer once again and go with dot step okay clear so this is what we'll be having so this steps will be done every time when you train your model you have to first call train and then make a prediction on your training data check for loss okay and then set a zero gradient on your optimizer in the loss function just go and call backward and then make a step which is updating okay clear guys is it clear so once this is done we'll be moving into a part which is evaluation every time you run you have to evaluate it so let me go with model dot or lr dot eval so this is going to set a evaluation mode so once you are in the evaluation mode what you could do is so the train is completed zero grad will set gradients to zero backward is going to update the parameters it is going to calculate and dot step we have done is going to update okay so now new weight and bias are done but you have to evaluate to switch it to evaluation mode and then what we will be doing is we will be doing the inference okay and calculate the test loss every time you train with your new parameters so let me just call with torch dot inference mode we have already used it right so inference mode you are going to make the testing here you have making it to learn here you are testing it every time every epoch so the test prediction is going to be your model with new parameters just test it okay so the test loss function is going to be loss you have to pass your test prediction and your y test which is their respective answer 10 questions and 10 answers original and predicted one okay so once you have this so what i'm going to do is instead of printing every time which is very clumsy let me just go with if epoch model as 10 okay is equal to 0 for every 10 epoch okay so what i'm going to do is let me just pass epoch dot sorry i have a count right epoch count is a list i'll append the what's the epoch okay so what's the number and then we need to add the loss the training loss okay so that list let me pass loss underscore function so that is a tensor and this train loss is actually a list so you can't directly do this conversion and append it so for that what i'm going to do is let me just call something known as dot detach which will help you to detach the tensor okay and then i'm turning it into numpy and then i can append it to a list so this can be done and the same i can do for testing loss i'll append i'm storing it in this list test underscore loss underscore function dot detach dot numpy okay so once you done all these things let me just print for our detail i'll use a formatted statement i'm going to complete please wait guys epoch so i'm just printing a report for us every time what's the epoch count okay so the mean absolute error 
on training okay so let me create for training it is going to be loss function and then so the mean absolute error on testing is going to be test loss function so that's it the entire process so if you just run it okay so instead of 10 let me run for 100 times so let us see if everything is fine you could see that see here every time i run this so the first time on epoch 0 the training okay loss and testing loss okay and then epoch 10 you could see the loss is decreasing right clear can you guys see this on training and testing the loss values so this is the training part and now if you go with lr dot parameters and let us make it as a list can you guys see it is like from initially our parameter if you guys remember okay so it has given a random number with weight of 0.88 and bias which was wrong okay and now after 10 training if you just go and see the gradients or state dict okay after learning it is just giving you that it has learned very quickly and it is mimicking your original 0.7 and 0 0.3 it is trying to be very close see here so now if you call your model to predict and make something like this okay I think we have to run it once again with inference mode we have to make a new prediction with torch dot inference mode okay so let me pass y pred equal to your new model parameters just get x test answer and then if you plot it so the prediction can you guys see the prediction is really very very close to your testing data can you guys see this initially it was here with a random value but over training okay so we could see that the loss is very low okay it is in a scale of 0 to 1 okay epoch 100 is actually not required here and even after epoch 100 it is very very close of 0.7 it is given 0 0.7003 and for this it is 0 0.3015 okay this much close clear guys is it clear how our model is training and how this deep learning is actually works in this basic example so as you guys remember i have already have a list for the loss so plt dot plot you could plot that also and uh, actually in the next session okay so you could easily do a linear model okay instead of going in with weight and bias okay see here instead of going and manually setting weight and bias you could call it n and dot linear okay and then pass this linear so what this linear layer is it's a layer of neural network which is available in torch dot n and that represents a linear transformation layer so you could directly apply this self n and dot linear instead of manually setting weight and bias a random number called super set this linear layer you have to pass what's your input feature what's your output my input is going to be one value and the output should be one value okay and then in forward i just need to pass this linear layer instead of weight or bias just pass this this is going to perform the same task and we will be manually applying this and seeing it in day five with this project which is press cancer prediction using artificial neural network with pytorch so with these things we'll wind up this session i hope we have seen a meaningful session yesterday we have seen the basics of deep learning and today we have seen how to implement it practically so i think we are ready for going and dealing with this project so let us see and do this we'll see tomorrow thank you thank you guys and if i had any internet issues sorry really sorry i'll make it go away in the next session And if you want to convert this masterclass into one month certified internship on generative ai you could join as internship user and uh, 
you will be getting a lot of benefits and if you want to avail all these benefits of project score downloadables personalized support internship certification on generative ai is really a important thing so you could join as an internship user and use this registration link which is given in chat box and get it in a discounted fee of 899 so we'll see in the next class thank you and please remember the steps which we have seen in the training loop because that is what we are going to repeat in further classes even in generative models we will be dealing the same thank you guys thank you thank you for your comments please keep the same spirit till day 21 thank you